In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can import and work with local files on Onlook so that you can leverage its visual build up and AI coding capabilities. This is very valuable for prototyping type workflow. We may be collaborating with engineers, product managers, and designers, and inserting Onlook in between removes the design to engineer gaps as it's leveraging your actual code your real styles and outputting clean React code that can be merged right back into your code base or deployed with a single click to demonstrate or showcase the prototype. Let's dive in. To kick things off, head over to the Onlook homepage and you'll see a new import next JS app button. Select like that. We're going to begin importing our local project. Let's just click on import local, GitHub coming soon, and select your local project folder. Now, if you're working individually, this will just be the same folder that you have open in your code editor. That's cursor, VS code, whatever folder is open there, select that, import it here, good to go. With my local folder selected, I'm ready to begin the import. Now, Onlook will take 30 seconds to a minute to complete the import. What it's doing in the background is, well, it's uploading all of your code, but then it's also auditing and analyzing it and mapping the visual styles, so what you see in the designer, to your actual styles in your code base. That way you get consistent designs and handoffs between design and engineering. Now, once the import is complete, you'll see it immediately as a preview on your canvas. You can click around, use it as the actual app previewed in screen here. We can also duplicate the screens if we wanted to add a mobile view, which I'll do quickly now. So I'm gonna select my window, duplicate the window. So we have a second one, and I'm just gonna switch this one to be a iPhone 16 Pro Max. And I can see if I head over to the brand, that it's automatically pulled in all of my brand colors for light mode, as well as my brand colors for dark mode. Now let's begin making some changes to our prototype. If I have a look at the screen that we have here, we're working on a new dashboard. You can see we've got some status cards at the top and then a table below the chart. I think these status cards are taking up a bit too much space. So I want to organize them in a grid where it's just four columns, one for each card, but I want them to still stack like this on mobile. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the design mode. I'm going to actually select my grid. You can see it highlights in purple here because it's a component. And this is also confirmed by checking it in the layers panel. I'm just going to ask the AI to make this a four column grid on desktop and single column on mobile. Can you update this to be a four column grid on desktop and one col on mobile? Now you can see the AI gets refined targeting because I've actually selected the right element on the canvas. And you can see here, it's gone ahead and made the change. That looks great. That's exactly what we wanted. And we can see on mobile here, it stays the single column as we wanted as well. Perfect. I'm going to switch this over to dark mode. So I want to see what that looks like. And we may make some changes to the colors here. So let's switch each. There we go. Okay, so next up, I want to add a little bit of accent or highlight to these metrics at the top so they stick out a little bit more. And I think I want to match them to the chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the component that holds these items. I'm going to go over to the text color. I'm going to scroll to my brand colors and I'm going to pick the main chart color. Now, because this color is defined in both light and dark mode, we'll update it to be the right light dark mode color. So you can see here, it's now refreshed in light mode with the correct orange. And again, if we switch that over to dark mode, it picks up the correct blue. Awesome. Now I'm happy with my update to our prototype dashboard and I'm ready for handoffs. We're going to do this in two ways. For the people that I want to hand this off to that don't need access to the code base, I'm simply going to go ahead and publish the project. This so will publish the entire app as an actual real working prototype that users can interact with, use, and you can share around. If I wanted to, I could also link this prototype to an actual domain name. And from there, you could quite literally start using this as a production build if you wanted to keep Onlook front and center of your workflow. Now this is published. You can see it's given us a URL. This is the URL that I'll be sharing with people. I also need to hand off the code back to my engineers. Now Onlook writes clean React code that uses all of your existing patterns and styles, which means once the project is exported, you can quite literally just drop it into that same folder that you were editing from before, and you'll be able to pick up right where you left off with your Onlook changes. To do that, just go to the top left, click on your project name, and then select download code. This will download the whole app in a similar fashion to the way that we originally uploaded the whole app, ultimately completing the loop. Now as a final check, we'll just check this actual deployed URL live, and you can see it actually works as a fully functioning prototype built in a live coded environment that you can easily pick up from in your own suite of tools or that you can return to and continue to progress from directly within Onlook. Now that wraps up the video for today. In this video, we covered importing and working with your local projects inside of Onlook. We went through uploading the project to Onlook from the correct folder. We then made changes both using the AI as well as the visual editor using our existing brand styles and patterns. We then published the project to a domain 
So it's actually a live working real coded app that people can use and engage with. And then finally, we've re-downloaded our code to merge it back into our local environments. That's it for the video today. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in the comments down below. Make sure to join our Discord community as well. We've got thousands of other builders, designers, engineers, product managers like yourselves. And until the next one,